This is a magnet battery. What makes it unique is that a static matic magnet field will induce a current and a voltage. Normally, you have a type of generator, you have a moving coil past the magnet or a moving magnet past the coil. This one works statically. Also, the other type that we will be briefly mentioning is when we have two dissimilar metals, we have a voltage between them. So that's the two types that we'll be working with today and illustrating. What I have is a small amount of fluid. It has a sulfuric and a glycolic acid in it. I believe that's what makes it work. I have two clips, alligator clips. They are chrome plated. So there is no dissimilar voltage being created. We're showing about 0 0.008 amp just from whatever. <laughs> so I have my magnet. I'll bring it close to the one alligator clip and I'll try to keep from touching it as I get closer and see that the voltage or the amperage rises. I believe that the free charges within the fluid is being accelerated toward the magnetic field which is when the alligator clip becomes magnetized, one side will produce it one type of effect down to zero. Over to the other side, you see a charge is being produced. This is current. That's important. A lot of devices I've made even will show voltage but no current. So this is an actual current, small, but it is measurable. These are a little finicky, these type of batteries. They don't like to be quickly changed, altered, poured back and forth, that type of thing. But if you kind of let them set, come to a lowest voltage as possible, and then bring your magnets closer. You can prove that to yourself. The charges are being accelerated to the clip. It's chrome plated, picks up the charge, producing a current. And it will keep charging for a while. Sometimes it won't charge at all. <laughs> I've tried for a fluid. I have very, very little fluid. It's just maybe a teaspoon and that causes a channel where the charges have to go back and forth through the magnetic field to the alligator clips. If you have too much fluid in there it doesn't seem to work very well. Again. Down to zero there. Okay. I've tried for pick up plates I've tried brass they don't work at all iron I thought would work they don't work tried some stainless steel that wouldn't work this is chrome it seems like it does work pretty well it will finally charge back up again okay we're going to go to a, another style battery that I have Okay, this is a type of a magnet battery and just briefly restating that this is what makes it so unique. This is why I'm making this video. I've never seen this done. I have a magnet here. There are uh, two button magnets and they're chrome plated. This side has a nickel plate, no magnet. So we was talking about the dissimilar metals 
they'll produce a small charge to begin with. So I thought, well, I'll try that and see if I can use that small charge from the dissimilar metals and see if they are affected by a external static magnetic field. Okay, this is only a milliamp, so it's 0.13 milliamp, and it's dropping because it's uh, being loaded down. These are not meant to replace a, a uh, power supply or anything. This is just put down the principle. I've never seen it before. Possibly you could uh, somehow, I have my fluid in the center. It's about half full. And uh, possibly if you had a free type of uh, charges, uh, perhaps a radioactive source or whatever inside here, and then magnetically pull those charges and accelerate them toward the pickup. Maybe you could really have some uh, power coming out of it. But this is just showing the principle again. So we're down about 0 0.09 milliamp. So I'll bring my magnet. So we have two dissimilar metals there. See how it's being affected? I'm not touching it, so it's not that. It's the magnetic field that's accelerating the charges within the liquid and making a current. And normally that's done with moving magnetic fields. But this is a static field. One way will produce one effect, the other one will produce the opposite effect. It will actually either attraction or repulsion to the uh, charges within the liquid. I don't know how long those charges would last. If they don't evaporate, I would imagine it will last quite a while. So I have a third type. The first type we had we had two uh, identical type of surfaces. We had about point what, point oh, oh 008 milliamp. So now we have uh, two dissimilar metals, and they'll, they'll come out around 0 0.06, 0 0.05, 0 0.03, because uh, you always have some dissimilar charges there. So we're going to go to the next one. Okay. Also, for those fluids that I'm using, this one I have. Uh, button magnets to them on each side. Inside I have a f the fluid. This one I did a little bit different. I put a little bit of a cotton in there so it wouldn't have it splashing around and sometimes for some reason it would work a little bit better than just having fluid, solid fluid. Anyhow I did that. The two similar metals, they have uh, the chrome finishes so they shouldn't have any dissimilar voltages uh, showing up, you know, you might have a like the first one had 0 0.008 milliamp. Well, anything that's going to be produced here will be through the magnetic fields alone. They're static again. Also, for the fluids, I've tried uh, sulfuric acid. That didn't work. That's what you use for a battery. I was surprised about that. I use salt water. That's what a lot of people will use when they're making dissimilar uh, metallic. Uh, batteries, they use salt water, uh, different acids. I tried Drano, lemon juice worked a little bit, I tried alcohol, hydrogen peroxide, muric acid, Epsom salt, uh, just incredible. But uh, this Zep, it has that uh, two types of acid, and I believe that's where the other uh, ingredients in there might be helping also. Uh, also, I've tried the chrome and nickel, that works best. This is chrome. Nickel work. I tried brass, didn't work. Iron, surprisingly, did not work. Uh, but uh, that was early on in my testing. I should go back and try some of those. So it seems like you have to have kind of the right combination of everything. So, anyhow, we'll go ahead. We're on the milliamp scale. Again, they don't put out much uh, milliamps. But, uh, you know, if you put a lot of them together, I guess you would have something. 
but I'm going to go ahead and turn over to, uh, we have 0 0.09, almost 0 0.1 milliamp, but uh, we're going to go over to the uh, voltage scale and uh, see what we've got showing on the voltages. And uh, Now this isn't loaded down at the moment, so it'll show uh, higher voltage at, uh, whoops, wait, than uh, when you're loaded down. But, but it does show 0.2, almost a 0.25. It's close to it, 2.4, 4. And uh, sometimes that'll charge up from there. Sometimes it'll uh, decrease. Uh, so, what I said, it's kind of finicky. I don't understand completely the mechanics of it. I just have the theory. So, anyhow, this should, if it had the similar metals, you might be showing some uh, voltage and amperage, but uh, these have the same chrome plated, so they shouldn't show much at all, but it, we're showing uh, you know, 0 0.1, 0 0.4, 14 volts, and we had uh, a little bit less than a milliamp. So uh, the surprising thing is this is being created solely by a magnetic field statically. It's not a moving field at all, and that's what's so unique. That's why I made the video, and uh, this would be a lot of fun to show your inventor friends and uh, try other combinations. If you had a free source like maybe a radioactive particle you'd put in the center of that and pick up those charges accelerating with the magnets uh, then you might really have some uh, power produced. But uh, using what I found uh, this is surprising. I've never seen this before and I hope you have a lot of fun and uh, make the next step. Thanks for watching.